inverse binomial. Now the first example we'll be looking at inverse binomial when n, the number of trials, is unknown and the information given in the question is p, the probability of success in a single trial, and a cumulative probability. So the question is, assume that 30% of tickets in a scratch and win promotion carry a prize. If a random sample of tickets is selected, what is the minimum sample size required so that the probability of winning at least one prize exceeds 0.95? So first of all, showing your working. Now, this would typically be a two mark question in the exam. So the first mark would be obtained by um, showing the formulation of the problem. So it's always a good idea to have it clear in your head what your random variable is. So let the random variable x be the number of winning tickets. So x is binomially distributed with n unknown and p equal to 0.3. Now that would be sufficient for the uh, assessors marking your question to know that you knew that, that you'd set up the question correctly. Then you can use whatever method you like to obtain the answer and then provided that you give the correct value of n, you would get you would presumably get the method the answer mark as well as the method mark. Okay, so we want to find n such that p the probability that x is greater than or equal to one exceeds 0.95. So there's a number of ways of doing this. Now the first way I'm going to show you is just a first principles approach, which is um, just um, doing systematic guess and check. Now that is a valid way of doing it. And before operating system 4.4 was released, uh, it was probably the best way of doing it in my view. Okay, so in a calculator page, we want to find, uh, we've, we've got uh, binomial, we want the uh, cumulative distribution to be greater than or equal to 1, and we want to see where that value exceeds 0.95. So this is a first principles approach by systematic guess and check, so menu, and we're going to do probability 5, and we're going to do 5 again for distribution, and binomial CDF is B. So the number of trials, we don't know, so we'll call that N, and we'll tab down. The probability of success, 0.3, Now, it's greater than or equal to 1, so it's got, so that it's got to be at least 1, and it can't exceed n. And that, of course, doesn't do anything, because it doesn't know what n is. But if I now copy and paste that, and I say that given, so given control equals, and then I left arrow across the given, n equal to, I'm going to guess 10. <clears throat> ah, 0.97, so that certainly exceeds 0.95, but is it, the, is it the, the least value? I don't know, let's try 8. Ah, 8 is too small, let's try in between. Ah, so 9 seems to work. 9 is the smallest value where the probability that x is greater than or equal to 1 exceeds 0.95. Okay, now the other method we can use now with the new operating system is inverse binomial n, and n is the key, but you want to use this when n is the unknown. So this can be used to find n when p and the cumulative probability are known. Now, in the menu, it's probability distributions look for inverse normal n. 
Now, this requires a bit more thinking, though, because you need to get it, the, the cumulative distribution is from x less than or equal to a value. So this is a, this is a good uh, command to use, but you have to be careful how you, how you use it. In this case, we have to turn that around. So the probability that x is greater than or equal to 1 is 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 0. And bear with me for the fact that I'm saying less than or equal to 0, which we know is the same as x is equal to 0. Um, if I rearrange that, I get that the probability that x is less than or equal to 0 is less than 0 0.05. Now the reason I included the um, less than or equal to is, let's suppose that you're asked for at least two prizes. The probability that x is greater than or equal to 2 is 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 1. And these are the values that you need to enter uh, when using this command. OK, so let's, oh, this is one I'd already done earlier. OK, we'll do it again, just so that you can see the steps. So it's menu and probability and distributions. And now you've got two options for inverse binomial. We want inverse binomial n, so the cumulative probability. Now in this case, it's 0 0.05. So this is where you need to be careful if you're using this command. So the p, 0 0.3, and the number of successes is going to be 0. If we wanted, because it's x less than or equal to 0, if we wanted at least two winning tickets, it would be x is less than or equal to 1, and therefore we would need to use 1 in here. Now it's useful to use the matrix form because you get a bit more of an idea of what's going on. So for 8, it's not it, it's too big, it's got to be less than 0 0.05. With 8, it's slightly higher, so it's got to be 9. 9 is the minimum. Okay, so that's two different ways of doing the same problem. OK, so the other problem we're going to look at is inverse binomial to find x successes when you're given the number of trials, the probability of success in a single trial, and you're given a cumulative probability as well. So in this question, assume that in a different scratch and win promotion, 34% of tickets carry a prize. If a random sample of 12 tickets is selected, find the probability of x for which uh, probably that x is less than or equal to the value x is less than 0.95. OK, so we're going to use, first of all, the uh, inverse binomial command. So this time it's not inverse binomial n, it's just inverse binomial. And this can be used uh, under those circumstances. OK, so once again, for your working, make sure that you show that it's binomial uh, with n equal to 12 and p equal to 0.34. Um, and we want to find possible values of x for that inequation to be true. So let's have a look at the command. So we're going to go menu and probability, which is 5, and distributions, which is 5. And we're going to go, this time it's inverse binomial with no n. OK, so what it's asking for is the cumulative probability. So that's 0 0.95. Tab down, the number of trials is 12. Tab, the probability of success, 
0 0.34. And it's always useful to have the matrix because then you can see what's going on. So we need to select the value which is less than 0.95. So 6 is less than 0.95. 7 is above 0.95. So x has to equal 6. All right, now another way, another method is we can use um, a graph and then we can either use a table of values from the graph or we can use the trace command. And the syntax is very simple. So we want f1 of x equals binomial CDF with n equal to 12, p equal to 0.34 with the lower limit 0, the upper limit x. And we want to see from which value of x, which value of x is below 0.95. Then to get the table of values, it's control plus t. Now, by the way, that syntax is fine for, for you to think about, but don't write that down for the examiners. The examiners don't want to, they want to see mathematical notation, not calculator syntax. Let's add a graphs page and for f1 of x, we want binomial CDF. The syntax is n, p, lower bound, upper bound. We don't know what the upper bound is, so we'll just call it x, and it will give us all the values of x. So let's graph that, and we get this graph, which is rather interesting. Uh, I could change the scale and it's probably not a good scale. Okay, I can use the tab, so menu, sorry, the trace, rather, graph trace, and then just type in a value. So let's try um, 4. And we see that 4 down the bottom here, 4, the probability is 0.612 when x is 4. So that's no good. So uh, let's try another value. 7, 7.97, 7 too big, so that's no good. Uh, and of course, we know from the previous calculation that 6 works, so press 6, bingo, 6 works. It's a, the, the smallest number, which is just below 0.9, sorry, the largest number that is just below 0.95. Now, if we instead press Control and T, then we get the table of values. So that's for x equals 1, x equals 0. Of course, it's undefined for less than 0. And if we go through the table, we see that when x equals 6 is the first value, which is below 0.95. <laughs>